Which category did you think was the most interesting and did you see any surprises while you were judging? Well, let's see. Adaptive reuse is always fascinating. Uh, certainly we saw some beautiful ground up construction, uh, but seeing uh, what some developers have done by converting uh, spaces from other uses into, into residential, for me at least, is always intriguing. Um, in terms of surprises, um, I guess I guess maybe just the the length that developers have gone to to convert these spaces, which I think in prior generations these are buildings that would have been torn down. Um, so we saw you know old factories and old warehouses and old food processing plants all turned into really really creative and interesting uh, spaces. It's interesting to, to see so many properties that had 300 square foot to 400 square foot units. Um, some of them studios, some of them junior one bedrooms. And uh, w what I found particularly interesting is that many of these units had kind of indoor-outdoor feel. They had a patio or it opened into a courtyard. And the properties, generally the properties' common areas, also accommodate a lot more outdoor living. And, and so I think that's, a, that's an attempt to uh, balance the smaller units. In so terms of financing and deals, uh, did we see a lot of creative solutions this year? Uh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, a lot of the, especially when it came to adaptive reuse, any of the historical uh, properties, uh, many, many tiers of financing. So we had uh, regular traditional financing layered in with uh, agency debt along with historical tax credits, uh, in some cases bonds that were issued by local municipalities. And the most, the most interesting deals are those that had three or four levels of that kind of debt to get a, to get a project done.